Hello and welcome to IVIS. IVIS is a 3D virtual environment which resides on Second Life. And this is the 10 cube challenge. So you will see here we've got a number of exhibition booths, orange, green, red, yellow, blue and purple. And uh, we are setting you the challenge to create a model using no more or no less than 10 prims, primitive objects in the shape of cubes. Now, um, just to introduce this activity, I wanted to talk a little bit about the concept of 3D modeling um, in 3D environments. Um, as you can probably see um, in this 3D environment or 3D world, there are lots of models, 3D models. And uh, the basic concept of 3D modeling is that every, every real life object has a shape or a form a geometric shape, a form that allows us to recognize it. And we attempt to replicate that shape in 3D environments. Um, and some of us are very successful. I'm going to tell you that I'm not one of them, um, but I give it a good go nonetheless, and I'm hoping that you will do the same in this activity. So I didn't uh, create this 3D model that we're looking at now, which is a chair, but I'm using it as an example. We recognize that this 3D model is a chair based on its geometric form, its shape. We know that chairs have legs. Most chairs have four legs, as does this chair. One, two, three, and four. We also recognize it's a chair because it has somewhere for us to sit down on, and it has a back on it. If it didn't have a back on it, it would be a stool. Other chairs we know have arms, but this is the basic form of a chair. And this chair has been put together um, most likely using prims, and um, these prims have been uh, linked together to form a 3D model in this virtual environment. So what we need to do is we need to um, go up to the build menu um, because we want to build our object. So I'm going to click on uh, build up here, and you can see that I've got this option to build. Now please note you must be in the advanced mode in order to see this build option. So if you don't see this build option, my suggestion is that you close down your viewer, your Second Life viewer, and reopen the viewer, and you should see a little tab that um, provides you uh, with an option of being as a, uh, uh, signing in as a beginner mode or an advanced mode. You need to be in advanced mode. Click on build now, and you can see I get this little, uh, what I refer to as the build window here. And my cursor has turned to a different icon, which I refer to as the magic wand. So I'm going to click um, on a space where I want to uh, build. And you can see by default, I have this uh, cube object. Now, these are referred to as prims in Second Life. But because we're calling it the 10 cube challenge, I'm going to refer to them as cubes, which is what they are. They're cube shapes. Now, first of all, you can see that we have our three axes that we work along. This is pretty standard in 3D environments. And uh, there's X, Y, and Z, but we're going to refer to them as the green, red, and blue axes. So first of all, I'd like to just show you how you can take your cube object and move it along the axes in order to kind of relocate it around your space. So what I can do is I move my cursor over the arrows, and you can see that it becomes active by becoming a little brighter and a little larger in size. Once I know I've acti um, activated my arrow or activated the axes that I want to move my object along, I left click and I just move it in the direction I want to move it along. And what's fantastic is it moves up and down the axes. If I want to move it um, horizontally, obviously I'm going to click on the green axes here and I'm going to left click and I'm going to move it um, left, right, left, right along the axes. So that's how we can move our objects around. If you go over to the uh, build menu here, you will see the option to rotate. So you can also click on rotate and similar, uh, similar function as the um, move tool. Um, I can just um, move my cursor and you can see these uh, axes are becoming active. So if I want to rotate my cube object along the red axes, I move over to the red ring left click and I can move and spin it around um, or rotate it around the red axes. So that's rotate. The other thing you can do is you can stretch your object. So I can go over here, click stretch 
And if I want to scale my object up, or rather stretch it up, I can do by doing that. So there we have it. That's how we can um, move the object, rotate the object, and stretch the object. Now, these are perfectly acceptable in this activity. You can do this. This is the 10 cube challenge. The other thing that I'd like to show you is um, how to duplicate a, a cube object. So imagine that um, I'm trying to make some kind of uh, object that uh, has cubes on top of the other. Well, once I've got my cube in the shape and position I want it to be in, I may just want to replicate the object or duplicate the object rather than trying to start off with a fresh print. To do this, what I do is, I same um, similar to when we're wanting to move our object, I go over and activate my uh, blue axes if I want to move it vert vertically. And I'm going to hold down the shift key as I cl left click on the arrow and move it up. And now I'm duplicating that object. So I'll show you that again. We've got two objects now. We're going to make three. I have selected the object that I want to move. You can tell it's selected by this yellow um, color around it. I'm going to go over to the arrow. It's become active because it's become brighter and bigger. I'm going to hold down the shift key on my keyboard. I'm going to left click and I'm going to move it up. And now I've got three of these objects. The final thing that I think you're probably going to need to do for this 10 cube challenge is, as I said before, lots of primitive objects come together in order to form a model. And what when I say come together, we basically link lots of different um, uh, prims to one object. So this is already um, selected with the yellow um, coloring around it. What I need to do is select the two underneath because I want to link all three together. So I'm going to hold down the shift key. This is similar to in Photoshop if you want to select multiple images. Holding down the shift key, left click, and you can see I've now got two objects with the yellow um, uh, coloring around it. And then the third object, holding down the shift key, left click, and now I've got all three objects highlighted. And I think with the yellow flooring, it's a little bit difficult to see, but that bottom one is still highlighted. I'm going to go up to the Build tab at the top left-hand side of the window. Click on Build, and you can see I've got this option here to link the objects. So I'm going to click on Link, and now I have my objects linked together. And you've got two of them are blue, one's yellow. That's because the yellow object is the parent object, but we won't get into that um, in this activity. And you can see if I want to move my object along, it's now linked as one object. I can move it all together. If I want to scale it or stretch it, I can do that. And it's all now considered one object. The final thing that you may want to do is go back on the general tab and you have the ability to name your object. So I can put 10 cube challenge. And that just means if anyone clicks it, they know uh, what my object is. So um, what we could do, if I come and show you a finished object now, I'm just going to close down my build window. Come over to the blue exhibition booth, and you can see here um, I've tried to um, put together a model that hopefully represents the real-life object of a helicopter. Um, you, I've used no more or no less than uh, 10 cubes or 10 prims. And uh, you can see I've got one, two... I've got this little thing coming out um, the top here, which is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then I've got two propellers at the top, nine and ten. So that's my attempt at the 10 cube challenge. I now challenge you.